Healthy Voyager. I'm Carolyn Scott, and I'm in the town of my ancestral home of Edinburgh, Scotland. After circumventing the country of Scotland, I saved Edinburgh for last. Home to my Scottish ancestors, I was beyond excited to spend time exploring this historic capital city. As I was staying for more than a few days, I started my stay in the heart of the historic center at the Parliament House Hotel. Situated at the foot of Calton Hill's iconic tourist attractions, this homey Scottish hotel is tucked away from the city noise. Comprised of three historic townhouses, you can experience both old and new town Edinburgh buildings. This makes for a unique hotel stay full of charm. Edinburgh is a perfectly walkable city and has so much to see. The Old Town Center is jam-packed with everything from historic spots to great dining, fun bars and trendy shopping. Amidst the history, visitors will find many modern hidden gems, like the chic The Ivy on the Square restaurant, boasting an incredible menu and tasty cocktails. So it's my first night here in Edinburgh and about a 10 minute walk from my hotel here in the center of town where all the monuments, the old town is. I'm here at St. Anthony's Square and I found the Ivy on the Square. It's a really beautiful restaurant, even just walking in. But what makes it even better, they have a fully vegan menu. This locale is right in the heart of the city a stone's throw away from the Scott Monument and other points of interest. Reservations are encouraged and a healthy appetite is a must. No matter who you're dining with, the Ivy has something for everyone. This California girl couldn't resist popping into this quaint yet authentic Mexican joint. After being away for so long, it was definitely taco time. Edinburgh has a medieval old town, an elegant Georgian new town, with gardens and neoclassical buildings. Looming over the city is Edinburgh Castle, home to Scotland's crown jewels and the Stone of Destiny. You can also see Arthur's Seat, an imposing peak in Holyrood Park with sweeping views of the city, while Calton Hill is topped with monuments and memorials. So much sightseeing can boost anyone's appetite, so when I walked past Beebe's, and saw that they had vegan cupcakes, I had to give them a try. While Edinburgh is walkable, there is a lot to see and quite a few hills and steps to climb. So it's important to pack comfy walking shoes that can handle the cobblestones and that keep you comfy as you explore. I love speakeasies and Hoot the Redeemer is one of my all-time faves. To get in, you're greeted by a fortune teller before heading inside to quench your thirst. Well, I'm about to embark on a spooky ghost tour here at the Real Mary King's Close. I love haunted walking tours in the evenings in ancient cities like Edinburgh. And this particular one takes you into the underbelly of 1600s Edinburgh in the time of plague. So that sounds pretty creepy and I hope I see some ghosts. Mary King's Close is a historic close or alleyway located under buildings on the Royal Mile in the historic Old Town area. It took its name from Mary King, 
a merchant Burgess who resided in the close in the 17th century during the plague. We had to put on um, Stuart's clothes that would have ran between these two rooms here. When you go through there, you'll see the top archway. It's all filled with rubble now. For the next portion of my time in Edinburgh, I had the wonderful opportunity to stay at the lovely Dunstan House, an independent family-run five-star boutique hotel over two Victorian townhouses set across the road from each other that offer guests the best of the Scottish capital. Set in two newly refurbished heritage buildings quite unlike anywhere you've ever stayed before. The Dunstan House is a breath of fresh Orkney air in the heart of Edinburgh. Guests are treated to incredible accommodations, delicious on-site dining, and yes, even local gin tastings. The Dunstan House offers food all day to its guests, from a delicious breakfast menu to dinner and even snacks if you're so inclined. Plenty of homemade vegan options too, you may never want to leave. You've got coriander, cardamom, angelica root. I don't hate it. <laughs> you want to taste it? No. <laughs> Apparently, this one is the first farm to bottle gin here in the UK, yeah? Yep. Uh, they started with potato vodka, and with that, they were able to make their gin, and now their uh, whiskey is due to come out pretty soon. I think that's a pretty cool story. Farm to bottle. I've not heard that. The tastings are super fun as the bartenders are incredibly knowledgeable and sure know how to make the perfect gin cocktail. But of course, I had to get out and see and do more things, like visit Edinburgh Castle walk the streets that inspired J.K. Rowling to imagine what Diagon Alley looked like. And yes, of course, try some more goodies. Walking from my hotel into Old Town, I stumbled upon a great little cafe that offered vegan as well as gluten-free treats. A nice little coffee and snack to keep me on the go. It was time to head out of Edinburgh and hit up one of the highlights of my road trip to visit my ancestral family castle. Being an ancestry and genealogy fanatic, I was so excited to find that the Scott family descended from a long line of dukes, duchesses, lords and ladies, and that remains of their land still existed. The Scots of Balweary have an incredible legacy and in fact, my 19th great-granddad was said to be the wizard that inspired Gandalf. Another one of my exciting highlights on my Scottish road trip was visiting the shooting locations for Outlander. I was stoked to visit the little town that posed as Inverness at the beginning of the series and stand in all the places that Jamie and Claire stood while also grabbing a yummy bite and doing some light shopping. Back in Edinburgh, I dined at Bread Street Brasserie, well known for its gourmet meals and yes, awesome vegan menu. Well, the sun has finally set here in Edinburgh and you can see groups of huddled masses around the old city. And that's because it's time for ghost tours. I'm going out with Meerkat tours because apparently they have the scariest one going. I don't know, I'm a little nervous. Oh well.
Uh, before we do so, a couple of quick warnings just to make sure most of us make it out alive, I guess. Uh, otherwise, it's not us. Awesome. The only Edinburgh tour with access to the Blair Street underground vaults. Having been filled with rubble in the early 19th century and only rediscovered in the 1980s. We have evidence to believe that this could have been an illegal tavern about 150 years ago. Or we could try to imagine what the space must have looked like back then. Since then, they've become known as Edinburgh's most famous haunted site. Strange underground caverns where terrible things once happened. They are the deepest, oldest underground vaults in Edinburgh. And with Meerkat Tours, you get a lot of history with a touch of fright. Well, sadly, it's time for me to say goodnight and farewell to Edinburgh, but I hope you'll join me again on the next Healthy Voyager.